Pastor Luke speaking the truth of the word and reaching the youth. Saving souls of the old, doing God's work with bones to do. And he turning up every week and get lit. And digging the church on Sunday, you can tune in and get your fix. Turn up, turn up, turn up. It's that we can turn up, turn up, turn up. It's that we can turn up, turn up. I need you to understand this morning, family, hear me, that blessings are not something that you chase, but the blessing is something that you attract. Let me say that again. Blessing is not something that you have to chase. It is something that you attract, and you attract them by the life that you live. And the only person that can prevent your blessing, the only person that can prolong your blessing is you. Your enemies can't do it. Your family can't do it. Your friends or your foes can do it. Because no weapon that is formed against you is able to stop God from blessing you. The only person that can cause the blessing to be delayed is you. If we are going to walk in the effulgence of all that God has for us, we can no longer avoid having this critical conversation with ourselves. And that conversation is, come here, if the enemy can't stop my blessing, if my family or friends cannot stop my blessing, and if I'm not currently walking in my blessing, what is it that I am doing or failing to do that's preventing me from walking into the blessing that God has for me? And it's a difficult conversation to have. It's, it's a bitter pill for many to swallow because oftentimes we don't want to hear God tell us that we need to repent. And so then repentance can't just be, watch this, it can't just be to turn around from your actions. Repentance is, follow me, to turn around in your mind. To repent means to change the way you think because when you can get your mind right, when you can turn around in your mind, you turn around in your life. Uh, Toy, when, when I was in uh, uh, middle school, uh, my middle school girlfriend broke up with me. And uh, she broke up with me and I was just so messed up. I was distraught, couldn't eat, couldn't sleep. <laughs> in middle school, but didn't want to go on, just didn't want to, didn't want to go. I thank God for grace because I never would have met Lady Kelly, but I thank God for letting me know that he had something for me. If I would have given up on life in middle school, come here, let me talk to you. And it was so bad that mama called her to the house and said, please talk to this boy. so he can fix a plate and eat. Watch this, watch this, I'm going somewhere, I'm going somewhere. So, so, so she comes to the house and she tells me, my quid, with her teeth gritted together. She said, I told you, I don't wanna be here no more. And that is, oh, stop crying, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. And my mother said something to me. Come here, I'm going to My mama said, she said, son, remember this. There is nothing more powerful than a made-up mind. Woo when a person has made their mind up about a thing, you can cry all you want to cry. You can stop eating if you choose to. But there is nothing more powerful than a made-up mind. And so when God is going to do something great in your life, he has to change your mind before he changed your circumstances. And the reason a lot of you that are under the sound of my voice today, the reason your circumstances have not changed, you cried about it, you stopped eating about it, you wallowed in the floor about it, but the reason they have not changed is because you've not changed your mind. But I've come today to tell you that the moment you change your mind about a thing, no devil in hell can hold you down because you've changed your mind.